everybody should understand the menstrual cycle, whether you have your own menstrual cycle and you're trying to get pregnant or whether you have a partner that's trying to you, we should all understand what is going on in our body because that's the only way you can understand if there's something wrong or how medications work if you're doing fertility treatment. And it is amazing. This is something that we should learn in health class, but we don't. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist, double board certified in reproductive endocrinology and OBGYN. And I've been caring for people for almost 20 years. And I didn't really get the menstrual cycle. It's just kind of this like black box until I was really well into my training. And when I'm answering my patients' questions, it's more about teaching and understanding the physiology and what's going on, not just giving an answer like, oh, you ovulate on day 14. It's like, well, what happens? Like, how is this happening? Or we're going to give you a pill called Clomid or Letrozole. I think it's important to teach people what it's actually doing to their body, not just add to this mystery of black box of what's going on. So this is a little bit different from my other videos, but it goes along with my whole goal is education. I have so many videos here on ovulation, on miscarriage, you know, go to the playlist and learn from there what you want to learn about. And I you know, have a website with blog posts. I am an author. I have written several books on miscarriage, on an integrative approach to fertility care with Eastern and Western medicine. Listen to my podcast, Baby or Bust. I I'm just so passionate about teaching. And you're going to think this is pretty funny because the graphics are really silly. I did not go to art school. I went to medical school, but this is how I teach my own patients. And so get ready to learn about the menstrual cycle in five minutes. Here we go. So again, don't complain about the graphics. <laughs> it's all about learning. Um, so the menstrual cycle is communication between some structures in our body between the pituitary gland, which is this little gland that lets, sits underneath our brain, talking to the ovary that has eggs that are up for grabs every cycle, and our uterus. Okay. And so it's a hormonal communication between these things. And it all starts with the pituitary gland. In the beginning of your menstrual cycle, like when you're having your period, the pituitary gland is pumping out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone to help recruit and help with the maturation of one of these eggs. And as the egg is maturing, it's you can't ever see an egg. An egg is a single cell, but it's in a fluid-filled structure called a follicle within the ovary. And as the egg is maturing, the fluid and the follicle is getting bigger and bigger, and you can actually watch that happen. And when the follicle is big enough, the egg is ready to ovulate. As this is happening, the ovary is actually working too, and it's making estrogen. So this estrogen that is coming from the ovary is doing a couple of things. It's talking back to the pituitary gland and it's also talking to the uterus. It's the estrogen from the ovary that helps the uterus build up a uterine lining to get ready to accept the embryo. Now, the estrogen that's talking back to the pituitary gland sort of gradually goes up over about two weeks. And when the egg is mature and ready to ovulate, the estrogen level hits this threshold that signals the pituitary gland to get going again. And the pituitary gland will make luteinizing hormone or LH to signal the release of the egg from the follicle. So if you're doing ovulation predictor kits and you're peeing on a stick and trying to figure out when you're ovulating, you are peeing on that stick to see when the luteinizing hormone hits its peak because that means that the pituitary gland is pumping out that LH because it's responding to the estrogen levels from the ovaries. The ovaries are saying, hey, I'm ready to ovulate. And the pituitary gland says, awesome. Here's your LH because that is going to signal the release of the egg. Now, after ovulation, that ovary is still making estrogen to talk to the uterine lining, getting it ready for implantation of an embryo. But after ovulation, the ovary is also making progesterone. So this is another hormone that comes from the ovary and it talks to the uterus and it stabilizes the uterine lining. I was taught, and I love this, that estrogen is like bricks. It's like building up the wall of the lining and progesterone is like the mortar. It like helps stabilize the bricks. And you only see progesterone in your system after you've ovulated. So a little bit of a recap. So in the first half of the cycle, the pituitary gland is making follicle stimulating hormone to help recruit and mature an egg. As that egg 
matures and is ready and the follicle gets bigger and bigger, the ovary is making estrogen to talk back to the pituitary gland to say, hey, the egg is ready. The estrogen level is where it needs to be. I am ready to ovulate. That estrogen is also getting the uterus ready for implantation of the embryo. It's getting it ready to be pregnant. When that, es that estrogen level is at its threshold, the pituitary gland will pump out luteinizing hormone or LH to signal ovulation. That luteinizing hormone or LH will allow the ovary to ovulate and the egg pops out of the ovary and hopefully gets into the fallopian tube to meet the sperm. The ovary after ovulation is also making progesterone, still making a little bit of estrogen, but this is when it starts making progesterone. And that progesterone and estrogen are helping to make that uterine lining perfect for implantation. Now, egg and sperm, if they meet in the fallopian tube, fertilization happens and an embryo comes down and implants into the uterine cavity, you are pregnant that pregnancy will stimulate more production of progesterone and estrogen from the ovary. And you will not get a period if you're pregnant because that wall, the estrogen with the bricks and the progesterone with the mortar is stabilized. The pregnancy actually stimulates with that beta HCG hormone to encourage that ovary to keep making estrogen and progesterone. Now, if you are not pregnant, there's no beta HCG or pregnancy to stimulate the ovary to continue to make estrogen and progesterone. And so it stops. So about two weeks after ovulation, if there's no pregnancy, the ovary stops making estrogen and progesterone. And it is the absence of estrogen and progesterone that signals a period. So again, after ovulation, about two weeks after ovulation, if you are not pregnant, the ovary is not going to continue making progesterone and it's not going to continue making estrogen. And with the withdrawal of seeing these hormones, when the uterine lining isn't seeing these hormones anymore to stabilize that uterine lining, then it will shed. And that is what comes out. The uterine lining, if you're not pregnant, it comes out. That is your period. So I hope you learned something today. It is complicated. It's absolutely amazing that our hormones communicate and that we have a regular, predictable monthly menstrual cycle. But you can also see if any of these things are thrown off, how people can have irregular ovulation and irregular periods. And this is understanding this allows you to understand your own body and how treatment works. And hopefully it can help you understand more to ask questions and advocate for your care. I hope you learned something today. Make sure you like this video, comment with questions that you have. If there's anything you want me to clarify, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I have a weekly video where I'm always teaching. And if you are trying, if you are working on building your family, I hope that you are learning a lot from my content. And as always, I'm sending you love, luck, and pineapples.